Hi, my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African American Film Critics Association. Today, we are absolutely thrilled to be talking to mega superstar Ricky Martin, who is one of the stars of the hit uh, Apple TV Plus series, Palm Royale. We're going to kick things off by introducing you to the African members who are on the call today, starting with Chris Stiles in Ohio, Karan Noir Kelly in Philadelphia, Dana Abercrombie in New York, New York, Ruben Regald in South Florida, Brandon Collins in New York, Al McGee in South Florida, uh, Niger Chambers in Washington, D.C. Well, I'm going to let you guys do what you do so well, and I'll see you on the other side. I had only been in Palm Beach two weeks. We don't know you. I'm Maxine Delcourt. But I already knew the Palm Royale, the most exclusive club in the world, was where I belonged. Evelyn, you are the woman to know in Palm Beach. I don't like you, Maxine. You're very good at making things awkward. I don't concern myself with the shenanigans of vapid poons. What is Evelyn wearing? Sleeves. <laughs> you know anything about rich people? I parked on the lawn. Robert, shake me another martini, and then let's play doctor. Do you work, Maxine? God, no. You want to work? God, no. You really want all this? More than anything I've ever wanted in my whole life. Like to take a few pictures? Maxine, you're the lead story. I see us all as one sisterhood. <laughs> <laughs> Our people looking for something new. Let me tell you something about the Palm Royale. It's a nightmare. And that's all thanks to you. Don't underestimate a Delacorte. I would never. I wanna change my way. Palm Beach is just a shell game. Everybody has a secret. You two behave. You don't have to have money. The blackmail is right here. You don't know the half of it. What in the fires of Hell's Pits is going on here? Off we go. You're in over your head. And girl, you don't even know it. I am never in over my head. It would be disrespectful to my hairdresser. Touche. Hi, Mr. Martin, Brandon Collison, Biddy and Popcorn Podcast. Um, now, you've been appearing in a lot more film and TV projects over the past few years, from Jingle Jangle to American yeah. Crime Story. How does Palm Royale fit into your journey as an actor, and what are you hoping audiences will take away from your performance? You know, even though, yes, we have, we're dealing with drama and we're dealing with comedy in, in Palm Royale, I think uh, it is giving me the opportunity to touch on a subject that was incredibly uh, intense for the period i'm talking about the 1960s and but it's still so relevant so to be able to talk about a, a, a man being able to be comfortable with his sexual identity and 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 or not uh it is something that i think is is in, important to address um it's it's um it's when when i when i do acting i just try to find these these scripts that uh will be of impact uh that that uh that being for me for my personal life but 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 also to whoever to whoever is watching um i i had the opportunity to work in the assassination of, of Gianni versace with ryan murphy some years ago and and Wow, it was it was draining, but because of the darkness behind it, and 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 we were dealing, we were talking about mental health, and it's it was something important, I think. And in this case, well, there's a lot going on. The, the need to be part of a of of a club, to be part of a group of people that maybe you're not a part of, is something that nowadays with social media, uh, let's talk about my kids, for example. You know, they are exposed to so much. So much of what maybe is not their reality that uh, that can create a lot of um, um, self esteem issues and and this this show t uh, addresses that a little bit. We have this woman that is obsessed with the idea of belonging to a club to a group of people that she's just not a part of and um, 
and yes, we bring we bring comedy to it, uh, but there, you know, in order for comedy to be effective, there has to be a lot of um, uh, sadness behind it, and uh, and that's and that's what we are having a lot of fun with while we were uh, recording, filming this this video, this show. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi, uh, DJ Chris Dows out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, you work with an all-star cast, uh, Christian Wig, um, Carol Bennett, Leslie Bibb, I mean, Roberta Sanchez. It's a phenomenal cast. What's okay. your favorite part of, uh, what's your favorite aspect of working on the set of Palm Royale? The most important thing was to be able to leave the script in my dressing room, in my trailer, and be open to whatever happens happens whatever happens from action to cut it's valid it's yes we have to tell a story we have to make a, a point across but the level of improvisation was really interesting and to be able to have that freedom as an actor was super super powerful uh i i was working with the queens of of improvisation uh, Kristen Wiig she's just a force to to uh a force and and it, it, it was nerve-wracking because you never knew what she was going to come up with and that was fantastic and she said but it wasn't that bad imagine if it was you know it was it was one of those moments and then obviously to work with with uh Leslie Bibb who's also a, a goddess in that matter and 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 Laura Dern and Carol Burnett are you kidding me this <laughs> why did i do to to deserve this you know because it's uh it's about learning i i know nothing i just oh i was just i would just walk every day on set and and i would just take notes because these ladies they've seen it all and they've done it all and they've done it all in a level of excellency that i just want to to learn from what they they are doing so for me it was a, it was about being humble knowing my lines, but knowing that anything can happen from action to cut. Hi, Ricky Martin. Hey, love, how are you? I'm good. My name is Karan, and I am with Love Music Pleasure and Karanism.com. I feel like I've been with you since Menudo, because Menudo- That's so right, good. yeah. Been with you since <laughs> Menudo. days ago, not long ago. <laughs> After that. It's so great to see you blossom in this way and in, in, in different directions. But I want to ask you about your character, Robert. Could Ricky be friends with Robert? And does Robert deserve friends? Yes, of course, Robert deserves friends. Robert wants to be strong. Robert wants to be... Uh, Robert also has the need to belong to a group of people that he's not a part of, but, but he's felt a lot of rejection in his in his story in his background and uh and it's uh it's it's part of his issues you know to to be rejected by his own family and uh and he just he's trying to find love the best way he can and uh can he be my friend can i be his friend yes i i i would be his friend and i would i would tell him hey bro let's just let's just be man let's just open up and not wear a mask and 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 let's let's start let's start loving yourself you know it's you got to go like this you got to you got to pamper yourself and and uh it's it is a wonderful it is a wonderful character that i think you've you've seen you've only seen half of his of the colors that he can show and and now in episode seven, we're starting to see them and it's getting better and better for him. Thank you so much. You you really, um, he is really layered. He's very, very layered. So I appreciate your thoughtful response. Thank uh, you. Thank you, thank you. Hey Ricky, good evening. My name is Nigel Chambers. I'm from Big O Belt Media. How you doing today? How you doing, man? Oh, good, oh, good. Yeah, I had my coffee, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so having a chance to check out the entire uh, series here, it, and it's such a fun and hilarious comedic series, uh, but yet it will such a powerful theme. And that theme is about outsiders fighting for a chance to truly belong. I'm curious about what does that exactly mean for you in your life and your professional journey? Man, I started doing this when I was 12 years old and I was part of a boy band and uh, it took me a minute 
to feel like I was part of this boy band because to jump into into a group dynamic when you know nothing about the secrets and the ins and outs or 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 the role that everyone plays in this commune, right? It's just that was traumatizing in a good way. I shouldn't say traumatizing. Traumatizing is a very powerful word, but it, it was it, it, it shakes you uh, a little bit. And mind you, once again, I must say I was only 12 years old. Then later on, you know, to get the the stereotype out of what a boy band is, you know, the young kids being sex symbols and and shaking their hips in order for them to get the lady screaming and 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 that competition was also very powerful so if we go to that level of 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 just just the 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 street cred was so something that i really wanted because uh we we wanted we wanted to have the critics uh approval and for us that was very intense then later on in live you start doing music and you, you know you become a soloist and you and you bring your part and you want to have a grammy if you want to be part of that group of elite musicians that that have a grammy and what do i have to do in order for me to get there same thing with acting <laughs> same thing with acting you know in, in acting you have you know, you have like, oh, he's a musician. Yeah, you got to show us what you got, you know. And and then I'm lucky enough to say that I was nominated for an Emmy with the show that I, with what I did with Ryan Murphy. So, you know, you want to be you want to be part of that group of people uh, that have an Emmy. <laughs> you know, um, and then obviously, um, yeah, we can have a lot of fun also talking about you know sexual identities and about being Puerto Rican and uh and 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 coming to the US and and speaking with an accent, you know, and and how you sometimes you feel a little bit of oh, but who are you and where are you from? And I love your accent. And I'm like, well, thank you. I love yours also. You know, it's one of those things that that it's it's we all go through it some way somehow um um but we, you got to keep pushing man you got to keep going and rolling with with life and and now that i have children i just want to inject a positive you know that that positive way of thinking into everything that we encounter in life and uh and educate about what we're made of and who we are and uh and um and so it's it's been wonderful. I I can't complain really. But um, we all go through it. And like I always said, if you went through high school, you always wanted to belong. You wanted to be part of that group of kids that were cooler than your group of friends. And we've all been through it. But um, that's more or less what I can recall right now of what life has been for me in 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 this in, in this uh, page of wanting to belong. Thank you so much. I appreciate the answer. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Welcome. Hi, Ricky. My name is Ruben Peralta Rico from Cocalegas.net. How are you? Good, man. Thank you for being here. Way neighbors. I'm Dominican. So. Ah, there you go. Okay. Caribe. Caribbean, yeah. man. Yeah, exactly. How do you feel in terms of representation of characters that we're having now in the industry? Because I feel that now streaming services and TV, they're telling great stories that we don't have on on, on, on film, like in the screens and in theaters. And how would you feel now that the industry is creating characters that represent more Latinos than before? I want more. Is that okay to say? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's, it's um, so uh, we are what, 70 million people living in the US? Se yeah. se 70 million, excuse me, 70 million Latinos living yes, in the US? Yes, I guess around that. Around that? That's a whole country, right? <laughs> there are countries that are smaller than that, and uh, and and I'm always going to ask for more, you know. Uh, then then again, you know, we are from the Caribbean, but within the Caribbean, there are so many colors and flavors and tastes and different accents. And then you go to Mexico, and that's another completely situation. And you go to South America, and you see Chile, Colombia, Brazil, completely different. So. What I'm trying to say is that, yes, I am very happy that things are happening. <laughs> I am very happy that we can see more colors on screen. 
about who we are and what we're made of, but we want more. We need more. It's it's um, it would only be fair. And uh, and there is a lot of talent out there ready to tell stories. And, um, and we just need the opportunities, like give us the opportunities, because if you don't give us the opportunity, we're going to create our own opportunities. We're going to start writing our own stories and we're going to find the money to be able to tell our stories however we want to. And and it, it, it's just a matter of time. But once again, yes, I am. I am very happy to say that uh, we, we can see more of us slowly but surely but it's happening and uh and it's a great beginning so yes streaming television is doing a lot but we want more we want more thank you so yeah. much you're welcome hey ricky i'm al mcgee with yeticket.com man i've always been a big fan of yours for many years since menudo and your music and your acting but let me uh, ask you about your your character robert in this series, why is Robert so dedicated to Norma, but he doesn't get paid a paycheck or anything like that? He has a nice little place to stay, but why is he so dedicated to this moment? Yeah. Yeah. Without any spoiler alerts for what could be a really good second season, we don't know if we're going to have a second season, but uh, this guy comes from... Uh, a very powerful family back in Puerto Rico, right? This is this one of the secrets that my directors and the creatives have shared with me about Robert. Where is he coming from? Preceding circumstances. And uh, and this guy comes from a very powerful family in Puerto Rico, and he comes from a, an unfortunate situation where his family rejects him. He joins the military forces in order to show them that he is a strong man that he can do. But anyways, no, they don't like him. They don't want him. And and she, he he found in this wonderful woman uh, love and affection and, and, and someone that he can count on and he feels protected. He protects her. No one is going to touch her, but he feels the same thing with her. And that's why he, he, he really wants to take care of her. He doesn't want anybody messing with her. And um and 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 it makes all the sense in the world without any spoiler. Everybody fantasizes with with them both in so many ways, in a very romantic way. And um and in a you have to see the rest of the show. I cannot tell you the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> of what's going to be happening in the next in the, in the next episodes uh but you know there's there's an oedipus kind of situation going on there maybe i don't know maybe he sees some love in her and the mother figure that he never had or he, if he had one was a little bit distorted and and there's there you'll see oh, oh man i cannot think but yes he's good it's <laughs> Yeah, I've only seen up to uh, episode seven. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also, I live in Palm Beach, and uh, I've been to some of the landmarks they talk about in in the uh, series. And and I I used to drive. I still drive around those neighborhoods with them big homes, wondering what's going on in there. That's why I like this series. It, I mean, I know it's fictional, also based on a real person almost. But I always wonder what's going on with these people. Who are these people? And you know, you gave me a glimpse of that. And just one more thing. How do you like the language they created to say that you're gay? For example, uh, that's one line in there that said, are you light in the loafers? <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah, that was, was funny. funny. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. Yeah, you know, that was that's that's the lingo that that Maxine has heard. Uh, you know, she's oblivious <laughs> about the possibility of this guy being gay. Uh, yeah. So she just goes back to you know the the the. Uh, I don't know if it was proper, but it was important to use it because that was the way people like her from her town would use before saying, "Are you gay? Are you a homosexual?" And and uh, and. And I, I just thought it was hilarious, you know, but that's it, it made me really uncomfortable as 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 an actor. And that's why I would just say, just hurry up and tell me what is it exactly that you want to know. Just because I I knew what she was talking from the second from the second she she started asking about my loafers. 
But um, I, I think it was very wise as a writer to bring all this um, uh, I don't know how to, uh, colloquial uh, uh, ways of saying, uh, are you gay? It, it, it was necessary. Of course, it adds a lot of comedy. And, and, and uh, but it's it's important to show also the the discomfort in him uh, because it could be dangerous. It could be it could be. Are you a man that holds hand that holds hand firm for a long time? You know, she she said something like that. Uh, it could be a little bit stereotypical, but bring it on. Say it. Say it. But I want you to get to the point and use the right terms. Are you gay? You know. So that's when I was able to say. I've been with men and I've been with women. Breathe in. I am gay. So it was important because there's a lot of men and women out there struggling right now today that uh, that can relate. And and then you, you, you feel the love coming from her as a friend. And then everything is light and we move on to the next story. So it's good. Thank you very much for that. And also thank you for your great acting in this series. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Your words. Hello, Dana Abercrombie, The Coalition. This Hi. series hilarious, but also heartbreaking at the same time. I want to talk about the last episode we saw you in. You acted with your entire body, your essence, your foot, your hair, everything. Um, it was at, right there at the driveway, waiting for the prince and didn't show. Can you talk about that moment for Robert? And does he have the ability, do you say, can he have the ability to realize the huge bullet he dodged? Or is it more of, he wouldn't do that to me? The denial is heavy. Mm -hmm. This guy's in love. And he hasn't been in love in a long time. And every time he falls in love, people get hurt. So this is the first time he's thinking about himself. And this is the first time he's realizing that I'm falling in love and no one is getting hurt. Uh, so I'm going to go full force. And then, oh, shit, I'm getting hurt because he didn't show up. He never showed up. And wait till you, you see the reaction when he finds out that there was a betrayal coming from his friend. Um. It was, that's, yesterday I, I went onto TikTok and I shared my stories, uh, my 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 thoughts on this episode, and it was just the saddest episode. I, I felt a very, very powerful episode, but that's why I said in the beginning of this conversation that now you're going to start seeing his colors, because you're going to start seeing his anger, you're going to start seeing his, his disappointments, he's going to start, you're going to start seeing his acceptance and and how he copes with his frustrations and uh and um but i i had a nut in my throat last yesterday i've been dealing with this story and these scripts for maybe two years now and i know the story but yesterday i was touched i was i was touched because you know betrayal is painful and uh and this is double the the pain the betrayal from the someone that he's in love with and the betrayal from the only person that he's counting on, which is his friend. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. On behalf of the world's largest group of Black film and TV critics, we thank you, we love you, we support you. Man, we got your back. Oh, man, and we thank you for watching this edition of Africa Roundtables. Have a great day.